Hi there, my name's Damien, and in today's demonstration, I'm going to show you how you can use Microsoft Lists to create email templates for your Power Automate flows. So what do I mean by this? Well, here I am in Power Automate, and I have the send an email action. And you can see here, I have the content of an email body. And if I wanted to use the controls along the top here, I could add some editing in, some bold, or maybe some bulleted text. But say if I wanted to make a change to the content of that body, I'd have to come back into the flow to make that change. And if I wanted to, to delegate that responsibility to someone else in the team, they would have to have access to that flow in order to make that change. Well, today I'm going to show you how you can use Microsoft Lists to store those templates. So here I have my example SharePoint or Microsoft List and I have the default ID, I have the title, which I'm going to use as the subject for my email, and then I have a new field called email body. And if we have a quick look at that field, we can see I've set it up as a multiple line of text, and I've enabled the enhanced rich text option. Now by doing that, if I go into edit, and then on click on this pencil icon, I get access to this rich text editor. And that allows me to specify things like the font, the color, if it's bold or italic. But not only that, I can insert images and add various other items. So using this as a template today, I'm going to populate that send email action. Now if I jump back onto my send an email action, I'm going to just show you how this flow is built up first of all. Now it's all based on a manual trigger. I do have a variable at the beginning here, which I'm going to use later on in the demonstration, which is an attachment array, and at the moment that's empty. And the reason for me including this is I want to actually include the attachments that are on that list item. I then use get item, which will retrieve that template. So at the moment I have a fixed value of one, which will retrieve that item based on that ID column. I have an add attachment scope, which I'll cover in more detail later on. I have a customer name, which is DemoBird365, and I'm actually going to populate the email template with this string. And of course, I have my send an email action. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete that content. And if we have a quick look at my dynamic values I have here, I have, as well as the title, I have the email body. Now, one of the things that I didn't mention earlier, if we have a quick look at my email body, I have a variable here. So I've used the at sign to indicate a string that I'm looking to replace. So this is where I'm gonna insert the compose with DemoBird365, and I'm simply gonna use the expression replace. So if we jump back onto our Cloudflow, I'm gonna go into the expression builder, type in replace, and then I'm going to select the email body that we saw. So we're going to select the email body, there we go. I'm gonna put a comma in. Now the string we're looking to replace is at to name. And then the value that we're looking to replace it with is again, dynamic content, and it's based on that compose action. So the customer name for compose. If I hit okay, that's all I need to do there. And the reason I've done that is like I say, I have this string here to name and I want to populate it with a dynamic value from my flow. Uh, if I had no dynamic content in that template, then I could simply insert the email body. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into a test right now and we'll just make sure that uh, that's worked as expected, that I get an email with that basic template that is saved on my Microsoft list. We'll hit done. I heard the email come in there and I have my demo email. Hi there, DemoBird365, how are you today? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go and make some changes. So I would like to have my name in bold. I'm also gonna make this more appealing or more obvious by making it bold and larger font and also maybe stick it in the middle of the email. And another thing I'd like to do is to include an image. So I have an image here. I'm going to copy the image address and I will go back into my template, into the ellipsis, into insert image, and we can paste that URL in there and hit save. That brings the image into my email. Um, 
and we'll maybe just add another bullet point to say here is some more stuff to look at and I'm going to highlight that in yellow. I'll hit save and I'd also like to include an attachment because I'd very much like um, an email attachment to go alongside this. So let's see what we can pick here. We will go with this document and hit save. So now that we've updated that list item, if I go back into my Power Automate flow, hit edit, hit test, there's nothing for me to change because I've done all the changes in the list. Hit done, and that's my new, new email come in, and I can see there, hi there, hi there Damon Brown 365 in bold. We have the bold and larger font here, the highlight that I've made, and also the image that I've included. And not only that, the file that I attached to the list item has now been included in my email. So that's great for one email because um, I have everything for that email address sort of fixed and the list ID is also fixed. But what if we wanted to send different emails to different people based on another SharePoint list or maybe just have some sort of dynamic content within this whole solution? So I've built another list which is based on a list of individuals here. We have a list of their email addresses, but I also have a value called email template. And so that's gonna allow the Power Automate flow to select the template that's used when sending the email. Now, if I have a look at my templates list, I have a template one and a template two. And my template two is the October update with a monthly update to the users that will receive that email. So let's see if we can implement that now as part of the solution. So the first thing that we must do now is we need to go into edit and we need to get those items from the SharePoint list. So I'll go into get items. I'll select my SharePoint site and my list name, which is my email list. There we go. And a little tip that I picked up just recently is Power Automate will complain that I may retrieve thousands of items from this get items action. I know there's only two in there. So in order to get rid of this little warning message, you can actually insert a forward slash there. And uh, that should clear out that message. There we go, it's gone. Um, so now that we've got that get items action in place, I want to do an apply to each. So I want to make sure that's after the initialized variable insert our apply to each and that's of course going to be based on the values from that get items action and then I want to apply the dynamic content from this uh, values array on the actions below now if I try and drag up this get item action I'll get an error message that it's, it's currently nested in another loop so in order to get around that I'm going to add a scope and that scope will allow me to bring those actions into the scope and then drag the scope into my apply to each. Now I was complaining before because I was, I was dragging one of those actions out of a potential loop, but now that they're all in that scope, they can all be dragged up as, the, as that group. So if we have a look at uh, get item, at the moment that's relying on a fixed value of one, we're wanting to pull across the value from the get items. So I have a column called email template and I want to supply that into the get item. So I'm getting the correct template. Now at the moment, I don't have that value available to me dynamically, but I know that if I type in the expression item, open close brackets, question mark, square brackets and single quotes and type in, what was it? It was email template, email template, and if I spell it correctly, that's an important feature. Um, that will then retrieve that template ID from that list. When it comes to adding attachments, which is a scope that I've not yet covered, I'm using an action here to get attachments based on the ID of the item. So this time I want to insert the get item ID 
that will get me a list of all the attachments for that particular item. So it would, it would look here at item ID 1, for instance. It would then retrieve a list of those attachments or an array of those attachments. I set the variable or the attachments array to empty. And then using an apply to each, I get that attachment content, which is based on the ID from this get attachments action. And I add them into an array or an object. And this is the definition of the object. Now I've done a video on this for uh, at adding attachments to Outlook. It's the same idea. You need to have the object here with the open and close squarely brackets, the name and content bytes keys, and then I'm using the display name, which is the of course the file name, and then the attachment content, which note is not in double quotes. So one of the things I need to change here now is the ID, which is currently fixed. So this is, of course, based on the email template also. So if we just go back into the flow, we can delete that. And I'm going to search for email template, which is available from get items, which is all the way back at the, the top of our, our loop here. And then the last couple of things I need to change are the customer name, which again is fixed at the moment. I want that to be based on the title. So we're going to go into here and search for title. Now that is based on the get items. And the two, if I click on add dynamic content, is based on the email, which is that field there. So if I search for email, again from get items, that will populate there. So there's no need for me to change the replace expression because it was retrieving the body from the particular item, which is now dynamic. It will, of course, replace the string at to name with the customer name, which we've replaced in this compose action. So if I go ahead, ahead and hit save and then we'll test, I'm expecting an October update email for myself because we have a quick look at the list. I'm on template two. Henrietta is on template one, and I'll bring up her mailbox as well. And I should get two attachments based on the October update, whereas Henrietta should get the attachment that I added to the list item in the first demonstration. And so hopefully that's the first email arrived, second email arrived. And if we jump into my email now, we can see that I have received a October update, which includes uh, an image there and two different attachments. And then if I bring up my other browser session, we have Henrietta. And so Henrietta's got the original attachment and the it's addressed to her based on that dynamic content that was provided earlier. So that hopefully demonstrates how you can use a Microsoft list for your email templates. Not only that, I've shown you how potentially you can use the attachments feature of the list item to include attachments in those emails too. And uh, potentially if you want to take it to the next level and have a list of users that you want to do a, a, the equivalent of a mail merge, apply different templates, then you can do that all dynamically too. So I'd be really grateful to hear how you get on with this. And uh, if you haven't already, please make sure you like and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks very much for watching.